been discussing uh, possible ways of saving energy, yep. fuel costs, yep. energy bills are rising, um, it's a big squeeze on us at the shop, let alone at home as well with the ponds, I think we're running something like 15, 16 systems at the minute, so yep. one question that we get asked is, um, can you turn your UV light off um, at times, so what's your thoughts? Yeah, my thoughts is turn the UV lights off. Good uh, energy energy saving tip. Just turn them off. Yeah, I did a, I did a quick calculation uh, through the shop the other day and I worked it out that we could save when the water's as clear as this. We can switch the UV lights off um, and we can save 130 watts of power per hour. So when your water's like that, definitely I would turn them off. Yeah. Um, could also if the clarity did deteriorate you could you could switch it back on for a That's right. short period of time yeah, yeah. just to boost it yeah. so what we do is um, whenever we're trying to match up ponds if you come into the shop we'll ask you where the pond's positioned if it's in full sunlight there is calculations out there which recommend um, the amount of wattage needed for the volume of the pond what the calculations don't take into account of course is whether you're in full sunlight yeah. uh, whether the pond's covered whether it's indoors all these types of things so the best way is to um, calculate the best way you can and then go larger yeah certainly when you're uh, first starting out yeah, uh, yeah when you want to flick the switch on then yep uh, to start clearing the water once you see the grain haze yeah it'll, it'll clear quickly with a bigger it'll, unit yeah, yeah five five to seven days we often find that when people um, lose track of the water or lose control of the clarity um, by replacing a new tube it'll take between 7 and 14 days to clear to clear up naturally so any thoughts on when to change the UV bulb best time to change the UV bulb would be the spring yeah definitely. and then you're going to get maximum power over the summer period yeah yeah yeah, yeah I agree the, um, there's in the spring if your UV has been off through the winter because the water's clear you flick it on in the spring the sun uh, is out longer the days are getting longer and of course there's more uh, that sun's energy going into the pond and creating algae and that type of thing so by replacing the tube in springtime you're ensuring that the tubes are its strongest um, when you need it to be ready for the and of course if a tube only lasts six months you've had the best use of that tube yeah throughout the summer yeah 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 um, other other ways of changing uh, of saving a bit of energy at the minute fairy pumps fairy flow pumps yeah that's a good one yeah, yeah. turn them right back yeah yep. so how how fast do you turn your pond over in the winter in the winter probably half of what i do in the summer yeah so not a lot really You're probably down to like what three every well, three hours, hours or yeah. So. yeah 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 again we did it on our pond uh, 24,000 litres this is our own collection in the summer I like to say that pond over once every two hours, yep. uh, so 24,000 litres approximately every two hours. Um, in the winter, again by turning the very flow pump down, um, we're turning it over once every three to four hours. And it's quite a significant saving on, yeah, on, on the wattage. Yeah. I think the, um, the 20,000 very pump runs at about 180, 186 something watts. like that, yeah. 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 And then by turning it down, um, we can we can really reduce it. Uh, we'll do a clip actually. Um, yeah. Of the yeah, reading. We'll, we'll, yeah. And then we can show uh, the viewers what we mean by setting the pump and how you can turn it up and down to match the needs of the pond. Really. Yeah. I always find it best to um, to try and run things to suit the ponds and the fish as opposed to off a textbook. Yeah. where it says do this, do this every do one that. hour or whatever yeah. because it depends how the fish are yeah. um, responding to what you're doing yeah. air so pumps air pumps yeah that's another good one yeah, yeah. The, um, the interesting thing with um, oxygen and particularly dissolved oxygen in ponds is that the colder the water the more physically the water can hold more oxygen so um, in the summer when the temperature is around 20 to 22 degrees the maximum amount of water regard of oxygen yeah. in the water regardless of how much air you put through it you won't exceed i think it's about 18 milligrams again right. check the figures out there to make sure that i'm 
being accurate with them. Yeah. But in the winter, of course, you, you're up to 18, 19 milligrams per litre of oxygen. Yeah. Turn them off. Yeah, turn them off. Yeah. Um, or if you're running, if you're running two air pumps, you could decrease it to one. Yeah, air yeah. Pump. I mean, a lot yeah. of the a lot of the fluid bed filters now. So a fluid bed filter is a filter where the media is in and the air is slowly bubbling it and yeah. churning it. Um, if you if you have a look at your systems, you may be running a pump, say a 75 or 95 litres on your fluid bed. Yeah. Another the air pump. pump in the pond. pond. Um, look at combining it to one air pump and then just. Yeah, lower with the correct valves and yeah. air lines you can adjust yeah, the flow to where it's needed. Yeah. So, this is a very important part, a very um, underestimated or under-researched part of koi keeping is the amount of oxygen saturation in the water. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I don't think there should be any barriers. What's your thoughts on heating, Michael? Heating? Um, not really. You've never Pick, heated no, the pond? No, I've never heated the pond, so yeah. I couldn't really gear the pros and cons no, of it. I mean, we, uh, we heated our own collection last year. Um, the second time we'd done it, the first time we didn't take it above 12 degrees. Last year with an air source heat pump, we had it up at 18 degrees. Yeah. Um, the fish loved it, of course, but I think, um, again, with the rising energy cost, we've got to look where we can save money. The fish are just going to have a, a standard winter this year. Yeah. And I think I've always found in previous years, if you can minimise the temperature swing, yeah, with covering it and things like yeah, that, by yeah, by putting covers on. If you minimise that swing, then it, the the koi are more stable. Let's say they're not they're not eight degrees one minute and then you're four yeah, degrees the next minute, and yeah. it, it can really affect them that way. Yeah, yeah. The uh, I don't think it should be a barrier to having a having a keeping koi now having to have a heater. It is very, very useful to have one on the system and then of course if you do come across any um, issues during the winter, a lot of the medications that we use of course are... Uh, over 10 degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah over 10 degrees, uh, some over 12. The, um, if you're near them limits and it's probably not going to be as effective as what it would be at the other end of the scale, scale of 20, yeah. 22 degrees. So you could really could have a heater just for emergencies. Yeah, exactly. If you really do need to bring it back up, then yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah. And one, one, uh, one parasite that we do uh, tend to see when the temperatures are bouncing around, of course, is white spot. Yeah. Now, white spot FMG, um, the go to for, for, it, for clearing yeah. that up, um, temperature dependent again. Right. So, if your pond's crashed to eight degrees and you discover white spot, you really need to have a, a mechanism of raising out to 12, 13 while the treatment deals with the um, with the power side. Yeah. So always good to have one installed in line. Um, we also do the ones we used to in the new pond last year where you just drop them in. Drop them in, yeah. Um, obviously not the control box. The control box is <laughs> uh, it's like a, an element that just goes into the pond. And the beauty of that is you're not restrict, you're not no. having to cut into any of your pipe work or, no, it's just, or to you, use it. It's just a plug and play job yeah. yeah yeah so yeah i hope you've um gathered something from this little talk and the other thing guys if you find this kind of talk useful then you know let us know if there's any subjects that you'd like us to cover or try and cover i mean um then we certainly will have a look and see if we can get it featured in yeah so we'll drop some links in the uh in the comments below to cover some of the products that we're talking um, don't forget to join us for the live koi auction. Yep. We've got uh, a little while to go, but we always yeah. get excited every Saturday for the koi auction. That's held on Facebook and YouTube from uh, 3.30 every Saturday. And of course, Deku is doing the filming. He'll be on the camera next time. Now he's smiling. <laughs> um, Dex has got some great fish on the band auctions at the minute as well, so be sure to check them out. Any questions, message Deck through band, and I'm sure that he'll do his best to answer them yeah great stuff yeah Cheers, guys. a 20,000 vary pump uh, evolution aqua uh, control panel really really simple to use these you've got three buttons first button is on off switch pop her back on what you'll see is that there's two two sets of numbers this second number that is steady and remains on all the time is the wattage that the pump's running for so at the minute our pump 
is running at 76 watts. When we press the up or down button, we're going to change the percentage of the pump. So when you're looking at the percentage of this pump, it's a 20,000 very flow pump. 50% of 20,000 is 10,000. So I'm going to turn this pump up to 50%. And there we go, that pump is now running at uh, approximately 10,000 litres an hour and it's using 105 watts of energy to do that. If we turn it all the way up to 100%, again just uh, a factual bit of information, that pump is now running at 240 watts. The interesting thing with these pumps is that's uh, 20,000 at 240 watts. If we knock it down by 10% to 90%, which is 18,000 watts, it's now running at 212. So we've saved just under 30 watts of energy there by knocking it down 10%. This uh, pump system that we're running this pump on is approximately 1,000 gallons, so let's say 4,500 litres. To turn that water over, um, we need to set up sorry to turn that water over once an hour we need to set the pump accordingly we like to run this one at about 35 percent which is 7,000 litres an hour so it's slightly more than the um, turnover of one hour however there is a lot of fish on that system you know and it's uh, we do like to ensure there's plenty of flow there for them so there you see it, a thousand gallon pond running for 75, 74, 75 watts per hour. The only other thing to bear in mind with your pumps is of course, when we look at the filter, the Nexus uh, 220 here, there is a maximum flow rate. With the uh, 10,000 vary flow, which is perfectly adequate to run this filter, you can set that percentage absolutely perfectly. We've saved a lot, of, uh, a lot of money over the years by switching to Veriflow pumps. So if you need more information, please feel free to call in the shop. Myself, Michael or Deck will talk you through the pumps and show you them. We've got uh, another three or four working pumps in the shop that you can look at um, to see what you think.